Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good. Ready for our Java chat? Got my coffee. Rock on. Ooh, wait. I like that. <laughs> All right. So what All are we right. going to talk about today? Well, today we're going to talk about springing into action because it's spring. Mm -hmm. Yes. And uh, what little details you might notice now that you, everybody's home a little more than often, uh, what you might notice is happening out there and, and how you can help out and hopefully not make things worse. <laughs> anyway. I, I don't think it's making it worse. It's paying attention. Right. That's Being aware. That's the big thing. Mindfulness, mindful awareness oh, and all of that. Yeah. So, uh, that's what we're going to strive to do today. All right. Who is springing into action uh, this time of year? By the way, um, Laura. <laughs> yes, Kathy. Is, is in Michigan. <laughs> and I'm in Virginia. So we are dealing with the seasons a little bit differently. And hence yes. our talks are incorporating those um, seasonal differences and how the animals and mm -hmm. plants are reacting at different temperatures so yes yes you interject and i'll say oh we've already had that happen here honey <laughs> yes yeah, so yeah, you're like in the future you're you're like this like wave that we can expect to happen so mm -hmm. for you i'm in the present for me so. <laughs> right? wow that was so deep i just don't even know where to start with that one Okay. So did you say you had some pictures of some I do. events? Okay. I cool. do. Let's see if we can actually, uh, if I can do that this time. All right. We have a couple of pictures. I mean, don't we always? It's pretty um, cool. Yeah. It says a thousand <laughs> words. <laughs> right. Although we also usually add in the thousand words as well. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So I'm going to try to make this all fancy. Animals and stuff. Another great title by me. And you did hit that button about um, sound, right? I did. I did. We'll see if it actually works. Okay. Animals and stuff. And be aware, you know, of nests in your trees, uh, different types of birds' nests and squirrel nests and babies maybe coming from there. So mm -hmm. keep an eye open this Good time point. of year. Whoops, apparently I can't. Technical difficulties. <laughs> yeah, this. You know, okay, there we go. Okay. <laughs> you did it. All right, That's this little good. fella. We usually don't have mammals on our show except for you and me. Um, a fawn, a baby deer. Uh, you might be seeing this in your yard. Uh, and during the day, the mothers, the does, will drop off their babies somewhere safe, relatively safe because the babies will just snooze all day. They don't have a scent. And so the moms will leave them alone and take off and do what they need to do. This is totally normal because the moms, the adults have a scent. And if they hung out with the babies all day, it would attract predators. Mm -hmm. So if you see what looks like to be an abandoned baby uh, deer, a fawn, don't worry. The mom will come back for it usually that evening. So when you saw that um, fawn in your yard, did you go outside and, and pet it? I did not. That's not a good idea. These guys are, wild animals are afraid of us, uh, you know, but these guys are super high stress. So just leave it alone. Give it some distance. Just chill. I was driving by in my car, driving up my driveway, and I took this picture from my car, so I didn't even get out. Okay. Yep. All right. And any questions, of course, just email us. If you have a question, uh, like sometimes people will see these guys for a couple days in a row, and that usually means um, if, if they haven't moved for a few days, then there may be an issue. The mom may have died or maybe injured or something, and that's when you can call your local wildlife rehabilitator and have them come we, in. But yeah. We can provide that information at the end of this. Absolutely. Video. For both locations. So. All right. Now, this is my cute, cuddly face right here. Uh, this time of year, you guys probably had this happening earlier because it's still warming up here, but reptiles and amphibians, snakes and turtles and such, they're waking up. It's warm. 
They're waking up to do the same thing the birds and the mammals are doing. Springtime, wink, wink, wink. So this is a garter <laughs> snake and they will uh, hibernate in big groups. It's like a big old slumber party. So then they wake up when it gets warmer and then it's time to mate. So these guys actually give birth to live young. They don't lay eggs. Um, cool. And when, they, when the little baby snakes are born, they just take off. So you don't even have to worry. Uh, you probably it's it's probably happening in a, at a spot near you, and you don't even realize it. So, but they're a little groggy when they first wake up from hibernation. So just keep keep a, aware of that. They might not be able to move away from you as quickly. I can't believe I got that picture so close. That's I know that's a great shot, and his tongue sticking like, out. <laughs> he was like, I just woke up and there's no coffee. <laughs> All right, moving on. Oh, hang on. Turtles. Yes, turtles. All right, so this is not a, an X-rated picture. They were just, they just wanted to hog the spotlight, literally. These are painted turtles, and they live in the water mostly. They're aquatic, so you can tell by looking at their tootsies because they're kind of webbed, better to swim with and their shells are more kind of streamlined, just easier to swim through the water. Uh, these guys and all kinds of turtles, land turtles, aquatic turtles, are out and about, move, on the move. They woke up from hibernation and they're getting ready to lay eggs. So they will dig a hole, lay their eggs, and hopefully the eggs will not get dug up by a predator and eaten. So keep, keep your eye out for some turtle movement. Yes. Yep. Um, I was going to say, springing into action, your cat just jumped from the snake cage. <laughs> oh, yeah. Isn't she adorable? Oh, yeah. yeah Oliver the snake. Oliver <laughs> is moving around. And so I'm not even sure where Abby the cat went. As long as she's not <laughs> in the aquarium. She gets in there when I open it up and take him out. She'll get in there. <laughs> uh -huh. Isn't she adorable? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, I'm going the wrong way. All right. Box turtles. Now, uh, these guys are, are land turtles. You, you probably know more about them because we don't have a lot of them in Michigan. They're, they're kind of considered threatened here. They can't really tolerate the freezing and thawing and freezing and thawing over and over again. That is our, our life here. Really? Yeah. Well, you know, by us at Wintergreen, there's not box turtles at that elevation. Again, yeah. another reason why we're kind of talking about spring here in Virginia and Michigan, it's like, it's like in the mountains, it's not quite as, um, you know, full blown because it's so cooler up there. You're talking 3,900 yes. feet. So certain yeah. animals don't do well up there. We don't have cardinals at that, that elevation either. Yeah. So I can, wow. yeah, I can see you not having a whole lot of box turtles. Box yep. turtles are, are, are forested, um, terrapins other people call them terrapins uh turtles and right now is a uh, a good time to see them crossing the road in the rain and stuff so yeah. if i see them crossing i'll stop and and continue to get them across as long as it's safe for me i think right for people to understand that um you know when they're in the road it's eminent danger for them because tires can hit them and you know mm -hmm. they're flat and fauna so yep. um but I think a lot of people understand that. More people yeah. nowadays seem to understand to help them across the road in the direction that they want to go. Yes, so. absolutely. I'm glad more people understand that because they do have, no matter what animal it is, turtles are, the, are no um, exception. They do have their territory that they're familiar with and they know more than we think they do. So they know where they're going, believe it or not. Unlike me, my nickname being Wrong Way Rogers, they know where they're going. <laughs> And so you can help them go in the direction they're going in. So, mm -hmm. excellent. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And this little fella. Oh, that's mine. Yeah. Um, yeah, I took that just past weekend. It's um, a pickerel frog. Uh, I was at a stream trying to fish, and I came up uh, near the edge of the um, stream and, you know, trying to figure out where to put my line in. And it startled me because it just went, Bleh! <laughs> right from underneath my foot into the water and at first I wasn't quite sure what it was and then I finally saw him because he blended in so well yeah so he was definitely uh springing into action and getting out of the way of a larger animal aka <laughs> me 
Um, and then I decided, since he was so cute and he stood there for me, I, I took his picture. He is very well camouflaged. I got to give him that. And uh, and yeah, as we pro progress into the spring, uh, the the frogs and toads are still singing. Um, you know, they'll they'll have their moment in the spotlight, some shorter than others, mm -hmm. and uh, keep singing. Um, so these guys, I don't think they're, I haven't heard them in Michigan singing quite yet, but again, you, you guys are a little ahead mm -hmm. of us, phenologically so. Uh, and I believe these guys, I get these and the leopard frogs kind of mixed up, so I'm sure someone will correct me, but they have like a snoring, they, their, their call sounds like a snore. And I think one of them is like a deeper snore and the other species is a, is a higher pitched one. But they'll mm -hmm. call from underwater too, which is really weird because you're walking along and you hear this <laughs> round and there's nothing. And then you get closer to the water and it's like, is that coming from in there? So just something to keep, be on the look at. Bolo. Yeah. And the listen out. Be on the listen out. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, ah, yes. Look out. Yeah, so <laughs> this is, this poor little guy is a, juvenile uh, black rat snake, a baby black rat snake. It actually, it's probably more like a teenager because when they're babies, their their patterns are really like gray, light gray and black checkered, and they're really prominent. As they get older, their colors fade. Ain't that the way it always is? Yeah. But this little fella, I guess, got himself tangled up in some garden netting, which you see on the right there. And somebody brought him into the nature center and boy, he was, he, I mean, he had that thing all over him. So we very gently, carefully snipped tiny little pieces of the netting away and we were able to get him out of there without getting him hurt at all, which was pretty cool. But I want to put this in there because um, with young animals, young and dumb animals just kind of wandering around like, hey, what's, what's going on? and exploring your garden and with animals in the mating season, thinking about other things, and you're starting your garden and you're trying to protect your garden, just be aware that sometimes the stuff you use might have unintended consequences. So it's always a good idea to keep an eye open for um, animals that might get caught in, in netting and things like that. And if you have any issues to contact your wildlife rehabilitator and they can help you out. Or us. Right, right. right. I mean, unless you want to try to handle it yourself. We've had a chipmunk get stuck in one of those. Mm -hmm. And so I wore like 10 mil gloves because he was like yes. biting into me. Yes. While I was trying to gently get his foot, um, you know, un untangled from the um, wire. Uh, so I yeah. didn't mind biting because I think I would have bit me too. If <laughs> Uh, yeah, they don't get it. You know, they don't realize it. Right. And and that's true. I mean, they, they do have teeth. And uh, I, with the, I, I got to tell you, though, with the black rat snakes, the babies, their teeth are so tiny that, you know. But if in doubt, don't mess around with it because chipmunks mm -hmm. may look cute, but little rodents have some serious teeth. So if you're, if you're at all concerned about your safety, just just call somebody like at the a wildlife rehabber and they'll tell you what to do. Definitely. Yes. Um, I was going to suggest also, since that happened, what I do now, I have blueberries and raspberries. So I have birds that, in particular, the, the gray cat bird seems to mm -hmm. come back year after year going, all right, where's breakfast? <laughs> it's berry time. Uh, never leaves me one. Not one. It's, not. it's very nice of you. <laughs> I know. It's like, why am I feeding? I mean, it's not that I don't want to feed them, but you can at least save me some. It would be so nice. So what I do is like cover the um, my my blueberry bushes, which are about ready to um, you know start to ripen. Mm -hmm. And then once that's all done, I take the netting off. I don't want to keep it on long because I don't right. want to the wildlife. And then we use thicker netting for the um, deer, like for the roses and stuff. Um, yeah. So the more substantial birds don't, yeah the birds yeah. really don't get into that and then lastly i told you about this earlier we try a new um technique i love um, this that, uh, <laughs> yeah i love it like a, i'm gonna do it how many ways can you take care of wildlife <laughs> in your yard yeah. like a jack-in-the-box pop up scare <laughs> them and they take off 
For an owl, I love that. The first time I saw a plastic owl, I'm like, oh wow, is that? Oh, that's not real. Um, yeah. But <laughs> a wild animal may not realize that. So we have a um, a sprinkler by some of my wildlife garden, mm -hmm. and so um, there's hostas in there, which I didn't plant, but they, you know, they are they're pretty, so I I, I keep them, and. Um, every year they'll go after the hostas no matter what I do yep. so yeah. this year we tried it with this sprinkler system where it's motion detected so when they come by it'll it'll recognize it and it'll, it, it, it goes around so yeah. it'll yeah. like spray around and guess what <laughs> I got hostas uh-huh I love that I am going to try to hook that up on mine I, yeah mm -hmm. it's, that, it's that's really brilliant amazing. it's brilliant keeping fingers crossed it'll work all summer so Keep us posted. Okay. What else you got? All right. Uh, probably nothing. Oh, look at these <laughs> two wild animals. You definitely want them out of your garden. Uh, they will come in and talk and talk and talk and drink coffee <laughs> and talk and talk. Right. Yeah, we we be talking, and, but, you know, that's the way we are. We're trying to, um, you know, pass on some information that's helpful to people and and because we love to talk and, and <laughs> jaw, I should say. Um, jaw, jaw was some Java. Okay, I thought that was adorable. Okay, so that's so all I got, my friend. That's today's spring it into action, <laughs> spring it into action, and um, uh, awareness, um, which is you know kind of significant so we will make sure we have link to the wildlife um any wildlife issues that you know you may have yeah um one thing i wanted to show you really quickly uh, as well is um yeah you got to disable so i can share um are a couple of the bird nests that i have around here um, for people that may have them in their yard and paying attention, like these guys are entertaining me right now. So can I share now? I oh, think so. Mother. I just made you the host. Okay, cool. Recording. <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so we're recording. Hopefully you guys can hear all of this. Um, so this is actually... Um, the a tree that yesterday i went around to, t to see where all of my bird nests are oh what's right that? right what's up yeah it was very windy yesterday it's been very windy and rainy up there this wind is not helping Oh, uh, I see a mockingbird nest. Oh, I see it! There. Several nests in the yard. Sorry, guys. Robin Woo. in the tree. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Robin, you know, Robin. Yeah. <laughs> but I've counted four nests. <laughs> in the yard. Hi guys. I love you. You're going to know. That includes the robin's nest, which is over there. And here. Sounds like a breathing is the nest to the cardinal. Right there, there the oh, yeah. have fledglings. Beautiful garden. Garden. <laughs> Ooh, there, man. And then where I'm sitting right now, it was that other nest. That's a grackle mm. with the morning. Dove. <laughs> Sorry, they just they fuss at me all the time. They gotta put their two cents in. Nah. Again, a robin's nest. So cool. Okay.
So let me see. Can I get to the next one? Ooh. That is that is a good close up shot of That's nice. Um, the mockingbird. Mockingbirds make um, you know, they use a lot of sticks yeah. um in their nests. Um this one is of a hummingbird yesterday. Oh. So I was really excited that he's what he's got to do. This picture, because this is a really cute one, this is the, the cardinal. So you saw oh, the yeah. nest. I was hoping you'd do this one. Yeah, so the cardinals actually, they, um, they made in March and then again in May and June. So they have two broods. Um, takes about 12 days for their babies to hatch and they usually have four eggs. Both parents um, feed them um, and usually what they'll, they'll feed them, you know, um, regurgitated food and at, at first would be like insects and then 10 days when they're off the fly, they're on, and then they're eating the seeds. So this mm. is where they, you know, if they're, if it's 10 days, the babies are now eating, learning how to eat seeds. Aren't they cute? Look at their little <laughs> they so uh, light feathers are like, mm, 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 mm. I know. We but look so ones. dorky. So, um, yeah. Oh, mm. that's awesome. Look at that. More, more, more. So honestly, if I was at work right now, I'd be missing all of this. So, um, see, you know. it's a ball. Awareness at home, and then there's another one. I think it was under the bush. Shy. Oh, though there he is. So they're they're you know almost ready. Yeah. And then they'll take off, and they'll be very independent on their own. Yeah, um, look at that. That's my very first one. Yeah. So this one, I do believe, is the one that's <clears throat> is louder than anything. So excuse me for running, but that's my red bud. My red bud has bloomed, as you can see. I know. And it has pods. Okay, now listen to this. You hear that? I can make this a very long film. That is a juvenile pileated woodpecker. I know. And it wasn't, a, I mean, I didn't, but I could have. Yes. And this, this juvenile pileated woodpecker has been doing this for four or five days now. Um, and it's nonstop all day long. And like, He's checking out the acoustics of the place, you know. I, I guess that's one one bird I'd like to know a little bit more. What is up with all of that calling for days in a row? Yeah, is he you know because if it's if he's looking for his parents, obviously they haven't answered him. So maybe he's practicing. I, I don't know. They 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 do practice, don't they? Well, yeah, but this I, this is one I, I really would like to study a little bit more about. Oops, sorry. Yeah, I'm gonna move on to the next guy. There he is. There he is. Oh, he's a handsome guy. I mean, look at that beak. That's a big head. That is serious. That's some serious beak. So he's definitely a singer. So here, um, again, we've got some morning doves. Um, you know, the fledglings learning how to eat with the parents. So there's the little. There's a fledgling. Morning. So the fledglings are like quite often the same size as the parents, but maybe slightly Ooh. different different coloring. Oh. A parent. Could be daddy. Yeah, they're calling now. Um, the funny thing about and doves they is they'll have two to three broods a year. The peak is the peak uh, season is April through July. That's that's a long peak season. Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. They are uh, monogamous for a season, and they um, both you know rear the babies. Um, what I thought was very interesting about the morning doves is that they actually create what's called a pigeon milk when the babies are small and they mm. feed them. That. So it's like more regurgitated food that they feed them. They call it pigeon milk. 
interesting so um i know they they're cute um 14 to 15 days they're off on their own so usually like i said two to three three broods in a season. The most famous thing about morning doves is that they make the most loosely designed nests. And um, <laughs> I've had More of a one. concept, really. Yeah, I know. And it, and it broke my heart. It was in my cedar tree, and it, it was just so, I guess we had a huge storm, and it just mm. tore it apart. And yeah. then all the eggs on the ground. And, yeah. Well, what do you do? You just have to live with the nature. It is what it is. And yep. then yeah, I'm not even <clears throat> confident about that one. And then, that, then of course, that's the hummingbird. So um, the mockingbird, the nest that I showed you, um, they can have two to four broods a year, four mm -hmm. eggs. It takes about two weeks for them to, um, you know, they're incubating for two weeks and then they mm -hmm. hatch. Um, it's the dads with the mockingbirds I thought was kind of cool. They have to teach the youngins how to fly. Oh, they're so good. Dads. Coming up for Father's Day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there you go. Um, you're so optimistic. I love you. <laughs> I like to, yeah. Then um, usually the fledglings are gone in 13 days. So kick them out. I'm, um, I, I noticed that you might have had a little bit of a gnome infestation problem. <laughs> how do how do you deal with that? I have a book on how to deal with angry gnomes. <laughs> okay, well, good. I just I just thought I'd bring it to your attention in case you didn't know. <laughs> I didn't used to, but it was a thing that my mom always had, or my God, a German thing. Germans, for some reason, they like things like gnome <laughs> and hedgehogs, those right. little garden things. So that's pretty cool. I remember, yeah, I remember you telling me about that. I have one. I'm trying to get attract a mate for my gnome. To see what happens. So, oh, dude, I have one gnome home that it includes going into the pond. So it looks like it's a door, and <laughs> he's standing there at the door. Um, which is where my bullfrog is supposed to be uh, oh. in the pond. So, so we can chat about that, I guess, on another time. Okay. Yeah, I want an update on him next time. All right. So we're trying to make this one short, and we're trying. Um, is, is there anything else we want to add to that? Um, uh, well, um, if anybody, I just if anybody has any cool things they want to pictures and stuff, or questions or whatever that they want to share with their garden or things happening with the babies and nests and all sorts of and gnomes and things like that to please let us know contact us and we hopefully will talk about it on the show next time exactly so i will have i'll have like our information um email instagram facebook all of that the wildlife information and yes. as always, we need to remind everybody, thumbs up if you like us, thumbs down if you um, have to go somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, there's no thumbs down. There's none. Okay, well, we'll see each other again soon, right? Yes, of course, we will have a lovely naturific day.